Category 3 storm with winds still at 115 miles an hour and all up and down the uh, east coast, especially from Savannah, Georgia, north to the Virginia border, uh, North Carolina, Virginia border. Residents there aren't taking any chances. They're starting to uh, see the effects of the storm uh, early on with the propagation of the strong surf, the high, heavy surf along the east coast, already causing some problems with some minor beach erosion. Two fatalities already in uh, South Carolina from the runouts of the riptides caused by the storm. Things are going to get worse before they get better along the southeast coast and residents there certainly aren't going to be taking any chances as Bonnie starts getting closer and closer tonight through tomorrow. So as you can see, people are stocking up on food early, getting a head start to uh, what could be a major storm affecting the southeast coast. But computer models vary as far as what's going to be happening. It could be curving enough uh, to see to not make an exact uh, strike of landfall across the southeast coast. We've had hurricanes here before and I've seen the hustle and bustle of everybody trying to rush to get it done, so I want to get it done before all that starts happening. With Fran, we've, um, our house was destroyed, so we're in the process of rebuilding down here right now. So we kind of take it seriously. Well, as you look farther to the west out in Texas, Tropical Storm Charlie came on through with some very heavy rain around the Big Bend area in Del Rio, Texas. 15 to 20 inches of rain fell there in the last 24 hours, in 24 hours over the weekend. As you can see, some tremendous amount of flooding damage there, and it just continues as the rain continues to fall in a small area in southeast Texas. Looking at the satellite picture of what's happening in the Atlantic Basin, not only do we have Hurricane uh, Bonnie to deal with, but a new storm has also formed a tropical storm Danielle down into the Atlantic and that storm is continuing to move toward the west northwest at about uh, 20 miles an hour uh, wind speed 40 miles an hour, but more importantly this wind speed here with Hurricane Bonnie now incidentally a wind speed of 115 miles per hour is generally double the amount of energy in a storm of 75 mile an hour winds. Closer to home, showers and thunderstorms in our area overnight tonight. Uh, the thunderstorms will be off and on, but decreasing in intensity. And tomorrow we're going to be seeing another round of thunderstorms in the afternoon as yet another uh, cold front approaches us with possibly some severe weather. More on our forecast coming up in a couple more minutes. Jack? All right, fine. Thanks, Neil. And now, your Storm Team 6 forecast with meteorologist Neil Astano. A little bit of a discrepancy with the high temperature today. Uh, some of the computers are reporting 90 degrees, but uh, all told, 89 degrees. The high today, 80 was our, is our normal high for the state, a record high of 95. It certainly was a hot afternoon, and that heat helped to contribute to uh, some unstable air this afternoon this evening with some more strong thunderstorms, this time mainly across the north country. Showers and thunderstorms did move across the capital district throughout the evening. You can see those storms tracking down through just uh, across the north country, northern Hamilton County, uh, Herkimer County, three to four, in some places maybe as much as five inches of rain. And we do have some more thunderstorms pushing through tomorrow afternoon. You see that one batch that moved tomorrow afternoon. Some showers and thunderstorms and possibly some locally heavy rains. Watch out for the lightning, maybe some hail. While well, Hurricane Bonnie continues to churn in the uh, western Atlantic, it's drifting off toward the northwest at only eight miles an hour, but the winds are still sustained at uh, 115 miles an hour. Makes a major hurricane, a Category 3 storm hurricane watch in effect from Savannah, Georgia, up to the Virginia, North Carolina line, and heavy surf advisories from Florida all the way northward in the mid-Atlantic states. And probably uh, by tomorrow, heavy surf advisories will be in effect for the Cape and the islands. So if you're heading out that way, watch out for some big storms. There's Bonnie. Just want to give you a quick look at Tropical Storm Danielle that formed today in the Atlantic. We might be talking about Danielle as we head on to uh, later in the week. So for tomorrow, we're doing tomorrow evening, then 80 to 85 tomorrow uh, for Wednesday, becoming partly sunny. We're going to be watching uh, the track of Bonnie, and that could affect us maybe into Thursday as well. We will keep you posted. 80 degrees for highs as we round out the work week. Overnight lows in the upper 50s to lower 60s. So uh, a lot going on with the weather tonight, Jack. Uh. Coming up, coastal towns become ghost towns as residents brace for Bonnie. And they aren't the only ones. The Capital Region family is keeping a close eye on the storm. We'll tell you why. Also, we now know the Capital Region woman who did taste her cyanide mailing. Channel 6 News at 11 starts now. Now, the number one news station in the Capital Region. This is Channel 6 News at 11.
Good evening, Hurricane Bonnie batter, barreling toward the coast. Residents clearing out. Maureen Maher is live. Tonight, the surf is boiling and the winds are gusting as Hurricane Bonnie gains momentum and inches closer to the Carolina coast. This was the most important warning a half a million people needed to see or hear. Powerful waves crashing ashore. Proof Hurricane Bonnie was for real and bearing down on the Carolina coast. Whatever happens, happens, you know. I mean, if a storm comes, a storm comes. I've been in hurricanes before, so it hopefully won't be that bad. Forecasters aren't sure exactly where or when Bonnie will hit land, but the threat was all that was needed to send people running for cover. Traffic was bumper to bumper on roads leading inland from North Carolina's Outer Banks. Officials up and down the coast urged last-minute stragglers to leave. Still, some tourists would not listen. We traveled a thousand miles and I don't think we're ready to leave just yet. We're going to stick it out. Most people aren't willing to take a chance that the first big hurricane of the season could be anything more than a washout. People have boarded up their homes, even packed up their outdoor furniture for a ride inland. Many remember Hurricane Fran two summers ago. That storm caused more than a billion dollars damage. We are rebuilding from Hurricane Fran two years ago. And we haven't even finished and now here we have another one on the way. There is no good time for a hurricane to arrive, but with a 12-foot storm surge expected, Bonnie's untimely arrival of high tide Wednesday morning could cause even bigger problems for coastal residents than originally expected. Maureen Maher, CBS News, the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Well, Hurricane Bonnie may be hundreds of miles from away from us, but for one local family, the storm is getting close to home. John Russell joins us now with how they're holding up. John? Jack, uh, for Chuck and Dottie Everson of Glenville, the next 24 hours or so will be very long ones. Hours they'll spend watching the news and Hurricane Bonnie and hoping that they'll have a vacation home left when everything is said and done. The Eversons say the worst part is not knowing, and for the next 24 hours, they'll have no way of finding out either. That's whether Hurricane Bonnie will spare their vacation home in Myrtle Beach or not. Everybody's gone. Um, they're told to get off the island. Police were knocking on our door down there where our renters were, and they said, leave. It is mandatory. Now, go. And so I doubt if they're going to be any anybody down there that we're going to be able to get a hold of. Overall, more than 750,000 people have been evacuated along the Carolina coast, with forecasters predicting Hurricane Bonnie, along with her 115 mile per hour winds, touching down sometime after midnight. It's sweaty hands time. You do worry. Your stomach is upset because it's a, for us it's a major investment. Now, the Eversons have owned their home in Myrtle Beach for the past 17 years, and while they certainly enjoy it, they'll also tell you that paradise does come with a cost. So what we're looking at uh, is um, a place that we go to every year and we never stop enjoying it. And um, is this the year now that, um, that we're going to see total destruction, the place is going to go down? Who's to know? Still, the Eversons say their main concern is not their second home, but the safety of their neighbors down south. Our concern always is um, for anybody who is down there, particularly uh, people whom we know, get out, you're going to get hurt, get out. And if there's anybody that's left there, there's going to be a problem for them. We don't want that, obviously. The Eversons say that in the 17 years that they've had the condo in Myrtle Beach, only once did it suffer damage from a storm that was back in 1989. Obviously, they're waiting tonight and hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, with their fingers crossed, hoping that uh, something uh, doesn't go wrong. Well, we certainly hope for them also. Thanks, John, Thanks. very much. And, of course, for the Eversons and for all the rest of us, the big question now is how close is Bonnie? And Neil Astano joins us with the latest. Neil? Well, Jack, it's close enough that the uh, radar down there, Cape Hatteras and that area in South Carolina, North Carolina, starting to see the rain bands coming uh, just close to onshore. Now, looking at the radar, you can see the heavy rain just offshore, the uh, Cape Hatteras area, and this area of rain, as you can see, is moving toward the north and, and west. That's the first area to see the brunt of the storm. Myrtle Beach is down in this area. The center of the storm is down here, continuing to move toward the north and west. As it does so, we're going to see those rain bands coming on shore in Wilmington and points north up toward Cape Hatteras. Now looking at the satellite picture the last 24 hours, you can see the storm is really winding up off the southeast coast. It continues that northwesterly movement, and as it does so, that heavy rain will move on in. Speaking of rain, we had a little bit of rain in our area. As you can see, things are improving, and we're going to be seeing a decent day tomorrow as a hurricane will stay to our south and east. I'll have more on our forecast coming up in a couple minutes. Jack? All right. Thanks, Neil. Makes me... Ow.
the number one news station in the Capital Region. This is Channel 6 News at 11. Good evening, everyone. Jack Arnicky is off tonight. The worst case scenario has happened. Hurricane Bonnie has hit the Carolina coast and state. Here's a live report. In Bonnie, top sustained winds are now down to 105 miles per hour. But here at the Outer Banks, where we're just beginning to feel the brunt of the storm, Bonnie's fury is anything but weak. 30 second stations, 30 seconds. Trying to update us in the midst of the storm on the Carolina coast, a storm which has arrived in along the uh, around Wilmington, North Carolina, around midway up the state, and is not moving very much. Storm which is staying there. The eye is about uh, 20 miles from Wilmington, North Carolina, and that's where former Columbia County resident Jeff Hotelling and his family are. Jeff lives there. Some family from our area are vacationing. And uh, Jeff, if you're there, can you give us the update that uh, we would have gotten there from our reporter along the beach? What's happening there with the weather, Jeff? Jeff isn't there either, but we will try to reach him uh, as soon as we can. Well, today in Albany, there was a uh, fire, a two-alarm fire, that destroyed a ferocious winds and very real threat of a massive storm surge. As Hurricane Bonnie continues to batter the Carolina coastline, Dean Staley reports to you. Hurricane Bonnie has a hold on the mid-Atlantic coast and doesn't want to let go. Bonnie announced her arrival in North Carolina with heavy rains and wind gusts of up to 115 miles per hour. Waves crashed violently. Water covered piers and swamped roadways. The stalled storm could bring up to 20 inches of rain before it moves on. Bonnie has already toppled trees and utility poles, knocking out power to more than a quarter of a million people. Near Wilmington, Bonnie ripped the roof off a hospital, forcing dozens of patients to other hospitals. Those who ignored warnings to evacuate and chose to ride out the storm say it never gets any easier. I mean, it's just sitting here pounding on me. Uh, I feel bad. <laughs> I don't like it at all. It's very intimidating, and um, yes, it does make me nervous. The sound of the wind really unnerves me. Bonnie took her time reaching the coast, and she seems in no hurry to leave. Even though the core is not as strong as a Hugo or Andrew or anything like that, it slowed down considerably, and in fact, it may take another day or two before it moves off of uh, North Carolina. The longer Bonnie lingers, the more damage she'll do. But emergency crews are prepared to move in the moment Bonnie moves out. At this hour, we have confirmed reports that there is flooding all along the Carolina coastline and all over low line coast and unfortunately has stayed there. Lori Mahar is in Kill Devil Hills with the latest. Maybe three hours of sleep. How are you holding up? Mm, okay. We're being pregnant, okay? <laughs> yeah, I've got dogs at home and got puppies, and I'm worried about them. Well, you can see the uh, damage that the weather is doing to the Carolina coast. Some of the people there who have been affected by it. Thankfully, it's still hundreds of miles away from us, and uh, hopefully, a few of the effects will reach us here. With the latest, here's meteorologist Neil Astano. Neil? Well, more than the hurricane is wreaking havoc this evening. We have a lot of rain across the area, across uh, the mid-Atlantic coast. We had hoped the hurricane was going to move uh, a little faster than it has been, but unfortunately for the Carolinas, mainly eastern North Carolina, it has not happened. And here's why on the water vapor imagery, you can, if you look closely, a little dip in the cloud cover there. That's a trough of low pressure that was swinging on through, and that trough was uh, hoping to pick this hurricane up and scoot it off to the north and east. Well, that hasn't happened, and what's happening is that hurricane has been spinning its wheels. As you can see, the radar is showing some very heavy rain coming in across the northeastern part of the storm. Heaviest winds from Wilmington, North Carolina up to Cape Hatteras, and this is the area that's going to be really hard hit from Wrightsville Beach on northward up through Wilmington and into the Outer Banks. Heavy rain is expected in this area because the storm is moving very, very slowly to the north, if at all. Actually, the latest 
Estimate from the Hurricane Center puts the storm nearly stationary. Wind speed is still uh, quite strong at 100 miles an hour, maximum sustained wind, and again, the strongest part of the storm on that northeastern side. The forward speed has slowed to near zero. Uh, the storm is basically stationary right now, and that's going to cause a lot of problems across North Carolina. Now, our weather affected a little bit by the hurricane, mainly with some clouds tomorrow. I'll tell you more about that in a couple more minutes. Thank you, Neil. We have more now what the conditions are along the Carolina coast, where Bonnie, as Neil has pointed out, just won't give up. Bonnie is a hurricane that just will not go away. The season's first big storm has hit the North Carolina shore with powerful winds and stinging rains. But she slowed down, making the pain and the suffering all the worse. I have like maybe three hours of sleep. How are you holding up? Mm, okay. We're being pregnant, okay? <laughs> yeah, I've got dogs at home and got puppies, and I'm worried about them. Bonnie's slow movement has stirred fears of even more damage than first thought. Her slow movement means even more rain and more flooding. Experts say hurricane force winds could linger over the state for hours. And then there's the threat of storm surge. With this hurricane, we expect to see a storm surge of 9 to 11 feet, winds gusting over 115 miles an hour and some very, very heavy rain. Bonnie's wrath is easily being felt. A hospital near Wilmington had to ask for help in evacuating patients after the wind tore part of its roof off. Hundreds of thousands of people remain without power. And far to the south in Boynton Beach, Florida, a boat rescue went awry. A powerful wave capsized one vessel as it was trying to aid another. Fortunately, no serious injuries were reported. Bonnie's lingering power promises to make this night a very long one. We'll just have to sit it out. Right. We're having a good time. We might as well make the best of it, right? Now that Hurricane Bonnie has all but stalled over the Carolina coast, the question isn't if there will be heavy rains and coastal flooding, but when and how much. Maureen Maher, CBS News, from the Outer Banks in North Carolina. Still ahead on Channel 6 News. Nightline has... Hey everyone, I'm Elisa Streeter. I'm Jim Brennan. Now here are tonight's top 10 stories. Prices falling on Wall Street. The Dow Jones lost more than 4% of its value. Today's drop of 357 points, the third largest single-day decline, and is blamed on economic problems in Russia and Southeast Asia. In early Friday morning trading in Japan, the Nikkei has dropped more than 400 points, falling below the 14,000-point level for the first time in 12 years. Many people venturing out to tally the damage from Hurricane Bonnie are pleasantly surprised. They're finding damaged roofs, some swamped boats, and a lot of downed trees and power lines, but no major damage. Bonnie is still meandering through northeastern North Carolina as a tropical storm. $40 million lotto ticket. It was purchased at the Stewart store in Bolton Landing in Warren County. And since that's a major tourist area, it is certainly possible a person from out of the area could be the winner. Also happening tonight, Northwest Airlines is trying to stave off a pilot strike that could keep its planes grounded. It's set to kick in Saturday if there is no agreement. Steve Emmerman looks into how that affects travelers in and out of Albany International Airport. This is uh, now Hurricane Bonnie. Again, it just moved off the North Carolina coast near Kitty Hawk. And behind it, it's beautiful behind this frontal system. So it all depends upon where you live. If you live near the coast uh, the next couple of days, it could be some real rough going from Boston to uh, New York City to Philly. 72 in Boston, uh, 68 in Albany, 65 as you head out to uh, Syracuse. The weather was happening with Bonnie. It's slowly moving off toward the northeast and pulling offshore, but still some heavy rain across southeastern Virginia and into eastern North Carolina. For us tomorrow, clouds will increase a bit in the afternoon, but another flooding. The wind didn't do a, a lot of widespread damage, but they've had flooding and obviously beach erosion because of the extremely high tides and the big time surf. Now with Bonnie shifting northeast, tropical storm warnings in effect from Watch Hill, Rhode Island, through New York City, down along the uh, Jersey Shore. So that area may be plagued with uh, some heavy duty winds uh, during tomorrow afternoon and uh, tomorrow night. Danielle's the next storm. Uh, winds still at 90 miles per hour. It's way out over the Atlantic, but it is moving west uh, fairly quickly, and it may threaten the Bahamas sometime later Sunday. After that, it may begin to shift northward. Tough to say whether it will affect the U.S. at this point. So tomorrow, again, this is Bonnie, just to the south of us. Rain will likely fall along the uh, south coast of New England with a uh, wind and uh, some heavy downpours over Cape Cod and the islands. And then Friday 
Friday night into a Saturday, everything begins to shift off to the east. So we'll be in this little, what I call the window of opportunity before this front comes in uh, later in the weekend. Forecast to look